Yes, it's Sunday. Uh, I really need some prayer. Uh, I woke up this morning uh, really hurting. Um, my knees were, oh my word, they were really hurting. I felt it uh, so, around uh, 3, 3.30 this morning, maybe even, even sooner. I'm still having issues right now. I mean, I'm not just having the normal pains. Just in case anybody's wondering, I've got arthritis everywhere. It's loads of fun. But when you've got it in your knees, especially, and you're trying to sleep, it really hurts. I, I was putting uh, Asper cream on them. I was putting some, um, uh, there's a special gel. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's like a cold. It really, it's really wonderful. Uh, forget it. So I really need prayer. That's why we're, we're in today. I'd love to go to a, uh, be physically in God's house today. But, you know, Scripture says, you know, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. So that's something I'm grateful for. But I wanted to share this time with you guys, especially here in, in Rum, uh, on Rumble and, and on YouTube Live right now. Uh, I, I invite you to come join me. Uh, I, I, and if you get to see this on Rumble later, or even when you're looking at this on YouTube later, you know, I, praise God. Uh, it, this is something really interesting I was reading in, in this morning's scripture and in, in, in God's word this morning uh, about how, you know, we need to make sure that we're finding time for the Lord. And, and, and I, I want to make sure I, I get this correctly here, okay? Like, that we're really making sure that the Lord is our priority, that we spend time with him. Um, the, the title of this morning's devotional is, you know, Finding Open Spaces. And th th this passage of scripture is really interesting because previously to this, and even during this, God is really angry at Israel because they decided to make for themselves a golden calf worship it and they really went all out but this is a really interesting moment especially between not just between God and Israel but also between God and Moses because Moses really needed some recharging in a, in a sense and he and God in, in this they have a, a very we don't know all the details of the conversation we don't know the words they spoke but he and God had a conversation he and God had a, a major conversation in more ways than one here. And it goes even further toward the end of the chap this chapter we're going to read. If you guys have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 33. We're going to focus on verses 1 through 4 and verses 7 through 11. This is really interesting. It says here, Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here. You and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, To your descendants I will give it. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. In other words... You're, uh, I'm gonna, if I go in your midst, I'm going to destroy you because you guys are stubborn. You're stubborn, you're obstinate, you're defiant. And I'm really ticked at you right now. Now, bear in mind, I want to make this clear, God still loved Israel. You know, he still loves Israel to this day. Um, people think that this was being, you know, completely harsh. No, he wasn't. Here's the response of the people in verse 4 says, and when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. Now, if you look back further, he tells them to, to not put on any ornaments. To not put on any ornaments. They're, they're coming before the Lord. They're coming before the Lord after this golden calf incident. And Moses says, you've committed a great sin, so now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses does this. God wants to blot them out of his book. He says, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now, therefore, go lead the people to the place which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. 
Nevertheless, in the day when I visit for punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. And there was a plague that came because of the, because of the calf and what you know and Aaron. And there's this this moment here. This is humility. This is this is extreme humility and and and, and you know I'm trying to think of another word for this. True true repentance. I, I would say. When it says no one put on their or his ornaments, this was a symbol. These ornaments were a symbol of pride. My, my notes go on to say, and I'm going to read this further. Okay, I'm going to read this further. It says here, verse 7. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered... Okay, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses... And all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tab tabernacle door. And all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. Now here's something crucial here as well. Yes, he says about their stiff-necked people. But here's something very crucial at this point with, 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 with God and Moses. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return to the camp. But his servant, Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Now, that's an interesting thing there, too. But I want to go back here. This moment, it's, it's, it's a, a moment in which the Israelites are admitting that they realize they sinned. And their response, when he says that I'm not going to travel with you, I'm not going to go with you, I, I will not go up in your midst lest I consume you because you're stiff-necked people. You know, he's saying, you're stubborn. I, 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 if, I go in, if I go before you, if I'm in your midst, I'm going to destroy you because you're so stinking stubborn. You're so insistent and defiant. You're so insistent on sinning and you're so defiant about it. And... Their their response was was one of I, I believe you know humble, you know. He's 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 going to keep his promise to give them the land of Canaan, but he himself cannot go with them. This is out of Asbury commentary because of their stubborn tendency to disobedience. And Asbury commentary says people with that attitude cannot survive in the presence of a holy God. The people shocked responses to take off the ornaments which probably symbolized their pride that they, they, they wouldn't wear their ornaments this was that this was them giving up their pride this was humbly coming before the lord and being genuinely sorrowful and repentant i believe but there's this interesting thing here where moses goes out away from the people you know with his tent he pitches this tent you know outside the camp and you know it's interesting this, ta this was called the Tent of Meaning. It was a reference to the tabernacle, but the, the tabernacle wasn't in existence quite yet. But this was a source of worship. That, interestingly enough, through this, Moses is a symbol of God's presence through the radiance of his face, which, that, that's something, which is the result of, of, of this situation. Because... Uh, after destroying the golden calf. But here's an interesting moment where his tent is outside the camp and he's having this conversation face to face with God. Uh, another way of putting it in Asbury commentary says literally mouth to mouth. It's an expression of extreme intimacy, but also of directness and communication. They're having a dialogue. You, you know, Chuck Smith was saying something very interesting in this. Uh, I hope I can s s make sure I get this. Um, when he's, 
in particular later on, you know, when he starts talking to God face to face, he wasn't directly looking at God's face. That that would be impossible. You'd be dead. But there was this complete and total communication between God and Moses. It was a dialogue rather than a monologue. They they talk with each other. He he talked to God. He'd say something. God would say, answer right back to him. And the statement here that that he spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, you know that's that's a a powerful statement. You know Moses is pitching his ta ta you know his tent outside of the camp. I'm it, it, that that's an interesting moment too, because you know. The people are watching Moses, which is very interesting. The people standing in their tent doors, they're watching not just Moses, but this pillar that's been leading them to send on the door of the tabernacle, the presence of God. It's this symbolic, re it's symbolic really of God's presence with them, with, with Moses. And when they see this, they all begin to worship God there in their own tent doors. And Moses is, is basically making intercession once again for the people because of, you know, their stubbornness, as, as it states. You know, there's a there's something interesting here, with with, with this too that, that that Chuck Smith says about, the, uh, you know, pitching his tent outside of the camp. It's now the people, you know, the people have to come outside now, of the camp in order to meet God, and there's an interest. He says there's an interesting spiritual sequel to this through. What Jesus did on the cross for us, Jesus being crucified outside the city of Jerusalem. Which, which I find really interesting. People can, you know, the Jews, or none of, you know, it, it, the, the, this moment when Jesus did this, people had to come out of Judaism to meet God through Jesus Christ, as he says. You know, there's this new covenant now that God's established. He established it with Israel. The, the covenant that, that was initially established with Israel is being disannulled because of the people's failure to abide by that covenant. So having abolished that old covenant, God has now established a new covenant, which is outside of the Judaism itself. That's what we have now, people. Uh, but this is a really powerful moment here because they're all starting to take their sin seriously. But th th there's something interesting, as I said, with verse 11 is the key thing. There's this... This whole thing that Moses is 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 needing, this this spiritual re-energizing, this this time with 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 God, you know we see Elijah needing this encouragement, this spiritual re-energization, you know after what he went through. You know he was he was depressed. He was frustrated. He was in despair. And Moses is in this moment too. And if you read this passage of scripture, you know, Moses is saying, God's like, you can have these people. Moses is like, no, I don't want these people. They are still your people. You know, there's, there's a moment here where God wants to completely destroy him, but Moses says, please don't do this. It's not, you know, he, he's interceding for the people to the Lord. And it's a very powerful moment. But here in this, this, this moment that Moses and God are speaking face to face, mouth to mouth, you know, like, like two buddies. There's a dialogue going here. There's a dialogue going here. And to start with here, Israel needs to have a clear realization of what they've done, a, a, an outward sign of mourning for their past sin and the loss of fellowship with God that resulted from it, which was they wouldn't put on their ornaments. They, they, they humbled themselves before God. And it's interesting, Bridgeway Commentary says how God's refusal to go with Israel troubled Moses. He therefore came to God with yet another request on behalf of the rebellious people. In introducing this prayer, the writer gives us a picture of how the people of Israel worshiped during the time before they built the tabernacle. You know, he's saying, Moses met and talked with God in a tent outside the main camp while the people stood at their tent doors, facing Moses' tent and worshiping in spirit with him. You know, so this is going on. And, and, and as I said, there's this conversation 
they're speaking to each other. Moses and God are speaking to each other as, as, as friends, and they were. You know, th they were talking to each other in a beautiful dialogue. You know, Moses was saying something, God would respond, vice versa. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, Tom Felton, this morning's devotional writer, was sharing some uh, interesting things uh, from a book called Margin by Dr. Richard Swenson. And mm. he, write, he says that, mm. you know, we need some room to breathe. We need freedom to think and permission to heal. Our relationships are being strain, starved to death by velocity. Our children lay wounded on the ground, run over by our high-speed good intentions. Is God now pro-exhaustion? Doesn't he lead people beside the still waters anymore? Who plundered those wide open spaces of the past and how can we get them back? Now, I found that very interesting because we're living in this quick, easy society. We're living in this quick, easy, you know, vroom, fast society, you know, and we're, we're rushing through things. We're doing things. We think we're serving God, but we're, we're just activity for activity's sake. You know, uh, a play, I, a, a skit I once did, um, my character, she boasts how, oh, my service in the church is the most important thing I can do. What about your service to God? It's not about quantity, it's about quality. And that's what God's, you know, not just that, but getting us to slow down. You know, Richard Swenson also said, how we're when when we're overloaded and many of us are there is pain not peace most of our lives contain more overload than margin and the, the writer of this blog shares how you know we live in a time where innovation and technology you know should make things simpler for us but they're not i, I mean look at look at all the craziness and you know all the things we do the choices we make, the our activities, all this stuff, it's it's exhausting. You know, we have all this stuff, but where do we carve out our time with God? You know, where do we find that margin? And, you know, sometimes we need to seek open spaces, so to speak. We, we need to seek out and carve out that time with God to really spend quality time with him. That's something I've discovered throughout the years. You know, in the morning, Ricky and I love spending time in God's word together. Or, you know, we'll, we'll spend time separately. You know, he wakes up before me. But there are times, you know, I spend time in God's word alone. Especially, you know, right now, I'm being so blessed to read this, this study of the book of Esther. And I'm learning so much from it. And sometimes, like I said, we need to make sure we're carving out that time in our lives so that we can have those open spaces with God. And it's not just with that, too. It's, it's, it's having that time to be able to, to you know, that, that margin to, to carve time for ourselves, to carve time with God, to make that quality time with God and serving him. Tom says how, you know, seeking open spaces is something Moses lived out well, and he sure did. You know, he's leading a nation of stubborn and rebellious people here, and sometimes he would withdraw to find rest and guidance in God's presence. And he had, as I said, he had this tent of meeting, so he would go there and spend time with God. And everybody else, it's, it's interesting, it says every man's tent door was faced toward that tent of meeting, and they also, as a result, started to worship at their tent door, you know, worshiping God there. They were getting in tune with God too, but here, here's Moses spending that quality time. And it's interesting what happens here because it says how the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. And you know, it's interesting, Jesus in his ministry, there's multiple moments where he would go off to a lonely place. You know, Matt, Luke 5, 16 says, that Jesus would often withdraw, you know, he would often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. You know, he would he would go somewhere and pray just, just to recharge himself. He would get up really, really early, you know, before dawn almost. And he would go he would go out and he'd spend time with God. You know, Matthew 14, 23, 
uh, says here, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. I mean, sometimes you need to spend that quality time with God. It's so important. And, and I want to ask this question. I want to ask this question tonight. I want to ask these questions, and I, and I pray they challenge you. I want to ask you, why do you need margin in your life? Why do you need margin in your life? For me, I need it to help me stay focused. I really need that margin that God offers to give me wisdom, to, to keep me focused on him, to know what to focus on and what I need to let go. You know, it's interesting, um, this this blog I was reading, it's very interesting, to asks, you know, how do we create margin in our lives? First off, we need a relationship with God. We need to be in a relationship with God. We, we need to, you know, we need to be able to ask it, you know, we can ask him to give us wisdom to know what we need to focus on and what it is we need to let go. It talks about spending one-on-one -on -one time with God, reading our Bible, praying for guidance, you know, as we start our day. That's what I strive to do. That's what I try to do every day. That's, that's the margin we need. It, it's, it's also prioritizing activities that we choose to participate in. We need to be intentional about the decisions that we make. And we need to evaluate our schedules. We need to say, well, well is this appropriate? Do I really need to do this? You know, the, the, it, the, this block says, do we control our schedule or does our schedule control us? And, and, and that's a key thing. You know, margin allows us to spend time with God in his word in prayer, in quiet. It gives us the ability to make more clear and appropriate decisions for, for, uh, for, uh, for us and our family. Uh, I'll read this again. This is from this blog. Margin allows you to spend time with God and his word in prayer, in quiet. Margin gives you the ability to make more clear and appropriate decisions for you and your family. Margin allows time for you to respond to the unplanned opportunities God brings along without feeling guilty or overwhelmed. And when you feel overload creeping in, remember this verse, what Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29 says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In other words, we can go to the Lord and say, Lord, I I'm just feeling so overwhelmed. Help me here. I give you this burden. I, I give you this. You know, sometimes we, we need to stop and say, okay, Lord, I got to stop this. You know, I learned that very quickly. You know, I, I learned that many years ago when I was in college. And I've shared about, you know, being in the hospital for a week, having passed a gallstone and it injured my pancreas. That last year I was in college, I was taking 18 plus credits and I was involved in so many, so many things on campus. And I had to cut all that back. I had to rest. And I also had to refocus on my diet and everything. And, and you know, I'm kind of doing that right now in a sense. There are times you need to learn what it is you, God wants you to focus on. And what you need to let go when you feel overload creeping in, you know, remembering what, what Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 20, and 29 says, that we can give our heavy burdens and, and our yoke to him. It says he's meek and lowly in heart and will find rest for our souls. That when we learn to trust in God and, and just commit things to him and give him our, you know, ask him to help us prioritize the activities we choose to participate in where we spend our money and what we think about, etc. We, we, when we learn to trust in God and know that he's got everything planned out and we, you know, we respect the margin. You know, we need that margin in our life to help us keep focused on him, to, to, to make sure that we're focusing on the vertical and not the horizontal. I think that's so important. And I want to ask this, this last question before I close. How will you, how will you build some space? I want to, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm conveying this effectively here. How will you build some space into your schedule to spend time with God? You know, a couple, few weeks ago, I, I said, you know, you want to be, you want to be with God at your best. Give him your very best, you know, in the beginning of the day. Whatever, whenever your day starts. For some people, they're on this graveyard shift and they don't get up until maybe 8, 9 o'clock at night 
and that's their morning. That's when their morning begins. But for, for many others, your day begins, you know, anywhere between 5 and 7 in the morning, depending. But that's when you want to get, you know, when you get up. When you get up and start your day, that's when you want to give God your best. Uh, that, that, that's, what I, that's what I strive to do. Every morning when I get up, I get up. My, my routine is, you know, I, I, I take my meds, get my clothes together, you know, it varies, and I take a shower. And after I get done and I'm dressed, I come in here in, in my kitchen, and this is where I spend time with the Lord. I spend my time with God. That's how I carve out my time with God. You know, God wants us to spend time with him. You know, we, we, we need to, as Tom Felton said here, we too need to build margin into our lives, some wide and open spaces spent in rest and in God's presence. Spending time with him will help us make better decisions, creating healthier margins and boundaries in our life. So we have the bandwidth available to love him and others as well. And, and you know, sometimes it's, you know, people come to you with the, these different things, wanting you to do them. You can, you can say, I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I, I have too many priorities. Don't, and, and don't volunteer yourself. You just say, Lord, you direct me where you want me to go. But make sure you're carving out that time with the Lord. Spend that time with him. Seek his face. Seek his face and, and find those margins. Respect that, you know, trust that God knows he's got everything planned and respect the margin that he has for you, okay? Remember, you know, one key thing here is that God, he wants us to seek him in open spaces. Let's do that today and every day, okay? I hope that you get to experience that one-on-one -on -one with him every morning or, or whenever you start your day. And for me, you know, God is the only one that I seek friendship and quiet moments with. And I hope he's that way for you too, that, that that's where your margin is, that, that you trust God to, to help you carve out that time. Margin gives, gives you the ability to make more clear and appropriate decisions for you and your family. It allows time for you to respond to the unplanned opportunities God brings in along your way without feeling guilty or overwhelmed. And when the overload starts creeping in, that's when you go to the Lord and say, Lord, help me prioritize. I think that's the key thing. Ask God to help you prioritize because I think that's what margins can do. Those wide open spaces. Ask God to help you prioritize those wide open spaces. When you spend time in prayer with him and in quiet, it... it that that's so important that margin allows you to do that and i pray that you'll do that seek god out in open spaces today and every day okay ricky and i have to get going we want to wish you all a really wonderful sunday a great lord's day stay safe and sane out there it's going to be really hot today so keep yourselves hydrated and just remember you are truly loved by an almighty god don't be afraid to carve out that time with him and ask, you know, seek God. Seek him out in open spaces today and every day. Carve that time out with him. Allow, allow God to help you plan those margins in those open spaces, okay? Again, you guys have a really great day. Stay safe and sane out there. And remember, you are truly, truly loved by an almighty God. Don't ever, ever forget that. Bye for now. See ya. See you guys. Lord, this is a really interesting...